All right, good day all. Um, we are on week 26, I believe. We're gonna keep going with uh, potatoes, grains, and pasta. Um, what we're gonna go over today is starting our nuts area. So we're just gonna keep going around, uh, you know, almonds, pistachios, everything that's considered a nut. Some of them are actually seeds, but they're called nuts because of the family they're in. Um, there's a lot in this. Uh, I, I put a bunch of different videos about nut allergies and how these nuts are used and processed. Um, so we're gonna be going over this probably quite a few days. So let me share screen with you. And sorry, um, let's get going. So let's get in here. Um, let's play. Okay, so we ended up finishing off with legumes. Um, so there's different types of peas too that's included in there. Um, black eyed peas, one of the most common, and then, you know, like green peas, split peas. Um, there's just so many different types and what they're used for, a lot of beans and rice dishes, a lot of soups. This one used for Hop and John soup side dishes. Depends on what you use them for um, is the application. So you could use them as pureed, whole, um, just an additive into something. I've seen a lot of people cook these and then fry them so they're like crispy. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff for the peas. Um, another one, pigeon peas, popular in Africa, Caribbean and Indo Indian cuisine. Um, sorry. <clears throat> my, my phone's blowing up. Um, so another different type of pea and then split peas. So using split pea soup, salads and side dishes earthy flavor. So let me just go ahead and mute this. Very earthy flavor. Okay, now talking about almonds. Um, teardrop, sh teardrop shaped, pale tan and woody shell. Um, they have a sweet flavor. It depends on how you have them. I mean, almonds have kind of blown up um, in the past few years. So as far as like what they use them for and the cost of them and flavor of them, almonds grow on trees. Um, and they're extremely popular, popular as far as, uh, we're with growth in California. Um, but they're kind of expensive. Like they're hard to grow. You need to have your trees and then you have to have them pollinated. So these almond farms actually pay bee keepers to bring their bees to them to let the bees free and pollinate their crop. It's not just something you plant and it grows. It's not like corn. Like you have to pollinate these things for in order for them to work. And I'm, I'm sure corn is too, but it's a lot easier. So bees have to be brought across the country to actually pollinate, the, pollinate these crops. And they're used in all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna watch a video in a minute of the health benefits of almonds because there's so many health benefits to it. And they're available shelled, uh, in the shell, blanched, slivered, sliced, split, chopped, ground. They're made into paste, butter, oils, and they're used raw in baked goods, convections, granola, and curry dishes. So they're used in a lot of different applications. I mean, there's thousands of ways to use an almond, almond milk, almond flour. So if you have somebody who's gluten intolerant, um, who can't process wheat, or somebody who's diabetic, that's where a lot of these nut flours work because you can grind these nut flours up and use them in place of, with combination of other um, flours, to um, make your cookies or pies or breads or whatever. So they have multiple health benefits, um, depending on what you want to use them for. If you have somebody who's lactose intolerant, these almond milks are delicious. Um, a lot of people go to soy milk, but too much soy I hear causes some, some organ problems. If you have way too much soy, there's something in there. Whereas a lot of these um, different types of milks. There's oat milk, but I know almond milk. I, I think that one's pretty tasty. If you get vanilla, I can't stand the unsweetened one. So let's watch this real quick and then we'll keep going with almonds. Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to share the benefits and uses of almonds. Almonds are an incredibly popular tree nut and are native to the Middle East. These are the nutrition details of almonds. Amount per 100 grams. Well, I also have a second channel named Wikipedia wherein you can find videos in Hindi. So do visit and subscribe. 
Let's talk about the benefits of almonds. Almonds are high in healthy monounsaturated fats, fiber, protein, and various important nutrients. They are a fantastic source of antioxidants. The powerful antioxidants in almonds are largely concentrated in the brown layer of the skin. Antioxidants help to protect against oxidative stress, which can damage molecules in cells and contribute to aging and diseases like cancer. Almonds are high in vitamin E, which protects your cell membranes from damage. Vitamin E is the name for a group of fat-soluble antioxidants. These antioxidants tend to build up in cell membranes in the body, protecting the cells from oxidative damage. Eating almonds reduces hunger, lowering your overall calorie intake. Almonds are low in carbs and high in both protein and fiber. Almonds can assist with blood sugar control. It has remarkably high amount of magnesium which is a mineral involved in more than 300 bodily processes including blood sugar control. Almonds promote healthy lipid levels as they are rich in vitamin E and folate as well as monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. If you are pregnant and not allergic then go ahead and incorporate some almonds in your diet for healthy and balanced meals. Nuts form an important part of your diet while shaping the health of your unborn baby for the coming years. Almonds are and can be used in various forms. So let's talk about the uses of almonds. Eating 1 to 2 handful of almonds per day can lead to mild reductions in LDL cholesterol levels. Soaking almonds overnight activates almond enzymes and improves digestion. Almonds can be processed into a milk substitute called almond milk. It has creamy texture and nutty taste. It contains neither cholesterol nor lactose and is often consumed by the lactose intolerant and others who want to avoid dairy products including vegans. Almond meal or flour is often used as a gluten-free alternative to wheat flour in cooking and baking. Almonds are a rich source of oil. Almond oil comes in two variants, sweet and bitter. The bitter almond is slightly broader and shorter than the sweet almond. Do you know that bitter almonds have traces of cyanide and its effects are severe or lethal especially in children hence they are not recommended to eat. The sweet oil is loaded with many skin, hair and health benefits. It helps reduce tan and dark circles, delays signs of aging, wrinkles and fine lines. It's also an ideal makeup remover. Almond butter is a food paste made from almonds. Almond butter may be crunchy or smooth. It's an alternative to peanut butter for those with peanut allergies. It contains significantly more fiber, calcium, potassium, iron and manganese than peanut butter and about half the saturated fats. Almond yogurt is made with almond milk and has healthy bacteria and vitamin D. You should have 5 to 7 almonds each day to get all its benefits. Pregnant women can have approximately 1/3 cup of almonds. Turn almonds into a waistline friendly snack by dry roasting them in an oven or a non-stick pan. And now I'm going to end this video with a beauty tip. If you wish to have long, flirty eyelashes, then make sure you apply almond oil on your lids. It's best to do this before sleeping. I have shared my knowledge of almonds with you and I hope I got you one step closer to it. Though the benefits and uses of almonds are endless, however I think I have given you enough reasons and ways to have them. So don't delay and go snack on some almonds while watching YouTube. And I will see you soon with a new video till then. Get okay. <clears throat> so as you see there's a lot of different uses for the almonds. Um and they're good several different ways. Roasted raw you can eat them raw they're a little different they kind of have like a chewier texture um roasted and salted is probably the most predominant way people eat them if you don't want all the salt just get them roasted they sell them different ways i've had them smoked before too they're not bad um i don't like that much smoky flavor in anything honestly so i don't really prefer the smoked ones um but they're really good as is almond butters use it as a substitute for peanut butter Uh what she was saying benefit wise to so the monounsaturated fat what that does you have you have good fat and bad fat and it's HDL and LDL 
So when you have fat and cholesterol, which is the same, you know, cholesterol is a fat in your blood, HDL is the high density lipoprotein. Those are good. Those are the ones you want. Low density lipoprotein is the ones you don't want. And they kind of counter affect each other. So if you have a very high amount of LDL, low density lipoprotein in your blood, that's when you start to get um, a lot of the blood clotting and, or not clotting, but the blockage. Okay. And that's what causes heart attacks and strokes. So you want the HDLs, the high density, um, which is what, you know, the monounsaturated is that's going to get into your system and help clean that out and basically clear a path and kind of like rotor root the, the bad cholesterol in your, in your body. So there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. These have a lot of good cholesterol. Um, and there, there's so many different uses for them in uh, cooking. So more nuts, uh, Brazil nuts. These are a lot of times people don't know what these are. These are those giant brown skinned nuts, um, in your, in like mixed nuts. Okay. Um, large triangular shaped, dark brown exterior, hard shell. Um, they're really good. They're just, they're so big. They're almost better if they're split and then roasted. So they have more of the crunchy texture on the outside. Um, but they're really, they're really tasty or chopped up and put into cookies and stuff like that. Um, cashews. I really want you guys to see that's a cashew. Uh, so I want you guys to see what these are. So it's kidney shaped, tan, uh, nut, uh, buttery, sweet flavor, only sold hold cashew butter eaten raw and toasted or cooked in baked goods. They use cashews a lot in um, Middle Eastern cooking um, because of the rich flavor of them. Um, but I want you guys to watch this because it's really amazing. And this is why these things are so expensive too. So you got to really think of why so many nuts are expensive. If you think of peanuts where people think, oh, those are so cheap. And then you get like cashews and macadamia. Why are these so expensive? Peanuts are a legume. So they're not actually a nut. And they grow, and we'll see a video on that in a minute, but they grow a lot more rapidly and abundant than these do. So I'm gonna play this for you guys so you can see this. It is said that there are four nuts which should be taken on a daily basis for health. And one of those nuts is the cashew. Phuket Island and other regions in the south of Thailand have built their economy on cashew nut production and what a specialised production it is. After the cashew nuts have been roasted to bring out the flavour, each nut is cracked by hand using this incredible hand-operated cashew nut press. Each cashew nut is then picked out using a sharp pointed utensil and then placed into a container for further processing. The cashew nuts are then delicately peeled, taking care not to break off the nib from the thicker end. After seeing how long it takes to produce a kilo of cashew nuts, it makes me appreciate the cost. Well worth it. One of the fantastic things to do when you come to Phuket town is to come here to Meiti Cashew Nut Factory. Now behind me are so many products made with fresh local cashew nuts and they're really wonderful. Lightly roasted and these ones here are really cool. I haven't seen them before. These ones are still in their skin, they're quite bitter really good for indigestion. And this one here is a concentrated juice made from the cashew nut apple. It's quite sour and they mix it with sugar, but it's really, really good for blood circulation and it's excellent, so delicious. This is actually my first chance ever of trying a fresh cashew nut apple. And I should point out that when these grow, they have to choose whether they're going to utilize the cashew nut or the apple, because by the time the cashew nut ripens, the apple's unusable. These ones here have been chosen specifically for the apple. Take off the cashew nut from the top, and then take a nice little slice off here. It is incredibly juicy. Now, a lot of fruits in Thailand are eaten with prick glue, which is fresh chili or dried chili, mixed with sugar and salt. Add a little bit of extra flavor. Yum, that is so different, unique. Nothing like it I've ever tried. Come down here, grab some cashew nuts when in Phuket. Okay, so that is a cashew. I know it's amazing. Um, I, I just found this video and I thought it was really cool because I've never seen where exactly, and there's actually a couple on here I didn't notice, but the, where do peanuts come from one? Um, it's amazing where the cashew actually comes from. And you see the process they have to do to get one nut. 
So if you think of a can of those things, they were all hand harvested, cut individually, peeled, and then you saw the little piece on the end, which is right here. You can't take that off. Okay, so when they peel that by hand, they got to make sure they keep that little piece on there. Um, it's amazing. And then honestly, with that little piece, I forget what that thing's called, but um, if you open up a peanut, like just a cheap way to do it, those have those as well. If you pick that off, it has a different flavor with the nut. That part's almost like bitterish. Um, but if you take it off, by somebody taught me this, that they would buy whole peanuts, crack open the shell, take each individual nut, and then peel that part off. I don't have that much time on my hands, but this person did, and I tried it, and I was like, wow, that's completely different. But it's you, you spend a lot of time for a peanut. But um, amazing how they do that. So you saw the different products they had there with it as well. Um, next, you have chestnuts. These are actually really, really good. So large, round, teardrop-shaped, hard, glossy, brown shell. Um, sorry, I'm going to write now. <clears throat> Off-white nut, sweet flavor, available in shell, canned water, syrup. So a lot of times chestnuts will be used, um, like they said, frozen, dried, or pureed. Sometimes they'll be, I find them in water a lot, like in a can. Um, but the most classic dish is people do roasted chestnuts for uh, Christmas. It's just an old school harvest the nuts in the fall, roast them, you know, for uh, holidays, that kind of thing. Not real popular otherwise. I mean, as far as I know, not a lot of people use these for anything else. Sometimes we'll add them to dishes. Um, one of the main things that people add nuts to are wherever these are naturally grown, whatever animals are around there that eat these, they'll be served with that animal. So if the pigs eat chestnuts or if there's a specific bird that's, that's, far, or that's eaten, like a wild game bird that eats these, they will serve them with the bird. Um, I know it sounds horrible, but it's actually really good. So if you have an animal that particularly eats these things, even like deer, um, you know, deer, bear, that kind of thing, like a lot of times these animals that eat these particular items will be served with those items just because they, they will have a mirrored flavor because if the animal eats it, it's gonna taste like it too. So they complement each other. So think about that for a while. Okay, um, so that is the chestnut. This one is called the hazelnut, uh, also called the filbert. So let me move me down here. So small, nearly round, smooth, hard shell, rich, sweet, delicate flavor, available shell or shelled, blanched whole, uh, chopped, and then used in sweet and savory dishes. I've seen hazelnuts in all kinds of different dishes. Main thing you guys have probably ever heard of with hazelnuts are, is Nutella. So here's Nutella cookies. Here's a cake with Nutella. Here's a Nutella like I don't know what that is. It's probably like a mousse, like a Nutella chocolate mousse. Um, this is like fried Nutella balls. And then I found this video of people who've never tried. This is called America's Try. Americans Try Nutella for the First Time. To be quite honest with you, I lived in Italy back in 2000, and I had no idea what Nutella was until I got there. And they don't have peanut butter, typically in Europe at that time. It's probably all over the place now but back then you could find like one nasty type of peanut butter if you traveled a long distance but they had nutella everywhere so in the mornings you'd have you don't eat breakfast you just have a thick slice of bread and you slap some nutella or something on it and that was your breakfast so nutella was very prominent but i found this and i thought it was pretty interesting he specifically told me not to double dip <laughs> but the power of the nutella compelled me <laughs> I've never had Nutella before. Really excited about this. I don't know how I made it this long in my life without it. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know if it's like made out of nuts. And people have said this is like God's gift to man and women. I'm excited to, uh, to see what the hype is about. Do people just do this? Like people just be like, oh, I had a bad day. I'm just gonna eat Nutella. 100 calories per tablespoon. That's insane. All right, I like this consistency, goo. Oh yeah. I like this. Oh, really good. I don't like the consistency. It's really thick. This is so good. I don't know. There's like a lot of chocolate at once. Wow, this is great. I don't like peanut butter, but like, this is like peanut butter's hot sister I want to date. I don't know, it's not horrible. I don't think it's the best thing ever though. I like it a lot. I'm scared of that now. Definitely have this like when a lady comes over like, hey, I got some Nutella. I don't even know what it is. It's magic. And it's good for you too, right? 
No, okay, it's not good for you. <laughs> I see what the hype is about. So this is Nutella banana mix. Kind of grossed out by this, I'm not gonna lie. A little drop test. Oh, there we go. Mmm. All right, you got me. No. I don't like that. It's delicious. This is it's pretty much like Nutella banana shake. The consistency of this is like a giant booger. And I might even lick the bowl too, <laughs> just because. I feel like you can serve this to somebody. I feel like you can say, hey, come over. Here's like a bowl that I put together for you. But that's fine, because then you can just make more for yourself and eat it in secrecy. This is like a I just can't right now kind of sandwich. You've thrown your waistline to the wind. Oh, it's amazing. I was really hoping I hated this one. I can't talk right now, I just gotta eat. I wish you could like feel this, it's so crispy. Yeah, no, that's disgusting. It's just good like lunch, lunchroom collateral. You can like make your way to the top. This tastes like if you took the s'more to like a really creative like chef and he was like, no, 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 I fix it for you. You know how many girls you could probably get make happy with this? You could have a party and then make a bunch of these. If you're just all women there, they'll love it. Everyone's like, la, 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 la. Um, that actually beat my expectations. So I know that was kind of silly, but that's for the people who've never tried Nutella. If you've never had Nutella, um, it's not healthy, just to give you a word of warning. Um, it does have hazelnuts in it, chocolate, and a ton of sugar, but it's really tasty. Like if you have something that you can serve it with where, yeah, I don't know, it's a good snack. So I think it's awesome with pretzels. Um, it's really good on bread or toast. But it's it's not good for you. But it tastes great. So so let's keep going. Okay, so macadamia nuts. These are another one that I think are absolutely delicious. Um, they're nearly round, extremely hard shell, gold nut, rich, slightly sweet, buttery flavor. Um, put in baked goods, uh, available shelled only. They don't serve these in the shell, and you'll see in a minute why. Um, but the most famous one, this is a macadamia nut and white chocolate chip cookie. Um, those are probably the most popular ways macadamia nuts are served, you know, like for younger age people, just because, you know, it's a cookie and they're really good. But I'm going to show you this video. Them by themselves are probably one of my favorite nuts. But this is a video on why they're the world's most expensive nut. Macadamia nuts are the most expensive nuts in the world. Considered a high quality dessert nut because of its rich buttery flavor, macadamia nuts are a popular treat and a trendy import in countries like China and the United States. A one pound bag can cost around $25, which is almost twice as much as other nuts like almonds. And they've been breaking price records year after year. But why are macadamia nuts so expensive? The main reason is the slow harvesting process. While there are 10 species of macadamia trees, only two produce the pricey nuts, and it takes 7 to 10 years for the trees to even begin growing the nuts. The flowering trees originated in northeastern Australia, and the nuts were eaten by the Australian Aboriginal people. They called the trees Kindle Kindle, but British colonists eventually renamed them macadamia after Dr. John Macadam. Despite originating in Australia, Macadamia trees were first commercially grown in Hawaii. Hawaii has the perfect climate for the trees. They need lots of rain, rich soil, and warm weather to thrive, which means regions that don't meet those requirements have to import macadamia nuts all the way from places like Hawaii, South Africa, Latin America, or Australia. And because it takes the trees anywhere from four to six months to flower, the nuts all mature at different times of the year. They're only harvested five to six times a year, typically by hand. Their thick shell, often removed before sale, makes it difficult to tell the ripe nuts from the unripe ones, making the harvesting process more work intensive and costly. Macadamias have become increasingly popular because of their high fat content. With 20.9 grams of fat per pound, they contain more fat than any other nut, which is why people used to think macadamia nuts were unhealthy. In reality, a majority of that fat is 100% cholesterol free and contains palmitoleic acid, which can improve your metabolism and help your body maintain healthy levels of insulin. Each nut is made up of 80% oil and 4% sugar, 
The high fat and low sugar content makes macadamia nuts ideal for many healthy eating and weight loss programs, including the keto diet, which cuts carbs while emphasizing good fats. Last year, the price of macadamias broke records, again. In Hawaii, nut and shell macadamia started the season with their highest net farm value ever at 100 cents per pound, and ended the season with a new record high of 110 cents per pound. The farm value on Hawaii's macadamia crops is estimated to be worth $53.9 million. Meanwhile, countries like China, who import them on a massive scale, are now working on growing their own harvest because of how valuable the nuts are. However, for the time being, the demand for macadamia nuts outpaces the supply, which drives up prices. But the global macadamia supply is expected to increase thanks to countries like China planting macadamia trees. Now, China is set to produce half of the global macadamia crop by 2022. Exporters worry that a bubble in the global macadamia industry is about to burst. If that happens, macadamia nuts may no longer be the most expensive nuts in the world. So <clears throat> there you go. Um, that's why they're so expensive. So you saw in the beginning of that, it's the slow harvesting process for those. And that's why they're so costly because there's not a lot of you know, supply and demand. There's a very little supply and high, high demand for basically their taste, their flavor, um, and their nutritional value. So a lot of people want these. So there you go. That is, uh, and you'll see, even if you go to buy these cookies at the store, which they usually don't sell them. Um, we used to sell these at a restaurant I worked, well, school I worked at, we would sell them in our restaurant and they would be like twice as much as a chocolate chip cookie for us to buy them but we sold them at the same price just because, you know, people aren't going to pay, you know, $5 for two cookies. Well, they might, but we didn't charge that. So anyhow, that's, uh, we're going to finish that for today. We'll keep going on with nuts tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's it. There'll be uh, four questions for you guys. So make sure you check out the questions for this week. This is day one. All right. Talk to you later. Let me stop this. Have a lovely day.